Should you spend your time learning all the forms of the pentatonic scale? Well, it really depends on what your immediate and what your long-term goals are. So first we're gonna go over why you wouldn't wanna spend all your time learning all the forms of the pentatonic scale. And then we're gonna get into why you should learn all the forms of your pentatonic scale. And it really has to do with your immediate versus your long-term goals. So if your immediate goal is that you wanna sound good as quickly as possible, then you shouldn't spend time learning all the forms of the pentatonic scale up and down the neck. Because if you're trying to make melodic solos that sound good, you really only need one form of the pentatonic scale and maybe some extensions into, into the next form. And everything you need is gonna be within that one form of the pentatonic scale for you. You're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to play licks that you want that sound good. You're gonna be able to play chord tones of the chords that are passing if that's how you want to solo, or if you just want to go for your long-term goals of being able to play up and down the neck, then you're going to want to learn all the forms of the pentatonic scale. And we'll get into that more, but let's talk more about what you can learn in one form of the pentatonic scale. So we'll just take our typical A minor pentatonic scale, which is five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. Everybody knows that form of the pentatonic scale, and the reason everybody knows that form is because it is like the holy grail of soloing for guitar players. 90% of YouTube videos are focused on that one form of the pentatonic scale. You have all the notes that you need from a pentatonic scale, and you can create all the licks with that form of the pentatonic scale. You have this box right here on the A, D, and G string. <laughs> And that gives you pretty much everything you need right there. You can bend into, into the form two. And you can add that a little extension into form two on. So that would be seven, nine, eight, ten, eight, ten. And that gives you a little extra to work with. And you can pretty much get everything you need right out of there. You have your blues turnarounds. You have all your triads sitting in this one form of the scale. So you have everything you need right there. But the reason you wouldn't want to just stick with just that forever is because you wanna be able to play up and down the neck. So if your long-term goal is that you wanna be able to play up and down the neck and you wanna have fretboard fluency, well, learning all of your pentatonic shapes is step one to that. You have your form one right here, which we went over. Then you have your form two right here. You have your form three right here. You have your form four right next to that. And then you have your form five. Which is also down here. Because it connects to your form one. On this channel, we like to talk guitar, and we like to try and get better at guitar. So if that's something you're into, then please like and subscribe. So all of those forms are helpful in playing up and down the neck because you can, you can play all the same licks in different forms of the pentatonic scale. So number one thing to understand about these scales is they're all built off the same intervals. So you have this box right here. You have the same box right here in form two. You have that same box in form three. You have that same box over here in form four. And then there's just pieces of that box in form five. And then you're back in form one. So more than just that, but every one of these boxes within your pentatonic scale, they all repeat. They just shift strings so they look a little different but they're all the same. And then another reason to learn this and to start understanding about the fretboard is the cage shapes. So the cage shapes all relate 
to one of these forms of the pentatonic scale. So if we're gonna start in form one, which would be right here, the cage shape in form one, since we're playing A minor pentatonic scale, we'd have to use minor chords. That'd be your A minor chord would be sitting right on top of your form one of your pentatonic. And then after your E is your D and your D minor chord. So your D minor chord looks like this. So there's your A minor chord in a D minor chord shape. And then you have your C shape, which C is not a typical minor chord shape, but it looks like this. And that's sitting over form three of your minor pentatonic. Then you have your A shape, so this is your A minor. Sitting over your form four of your pentatonic. And then your form five, you come back down here, is gonna have your, your G shape, which G is not a typical minor chord, but if you're gonna play that as a minor chord, you're gonna have to flatten this third, and it looks like this. So those are your minor shapes in your minor pentatonic. If you're gonna turn this into a major pentatonic, well, this is a C major pentatonic, just like it's an A minor pentatonic because it's relative major and minor. So your C shaped, your C shape sitting over your form one of your major pentatonic is now your G shape out of your cage system. So then when you move into your form two of that pentatonic, it becomes your E shape. And then your form three is your D shape. So that's your C shape D chord, or you could play it like this, which is to me, an impossible shape to play. It's impossible. There's no point in playing that shape, just play it like this, or play it like this. And then you're back to your C shape. Sitting over your form four. And then you're moving down and you're into your A shape. Sitting over your form five. So all those cage shapes are in there. So you can find all those shapes relate to one of your forms of your pentatonic scale. And you can really start understanding the fretboard when you start to understand this stuff. So the cage shapes, just another way to play inversions of every chord up the neck and those scales are just built around those other inversions. So long-term, absolutely learn every form of your pentatonic scale. Short-term, if you're just trying to solo and sound good, then just work on creating licks out of one form of your pentatonic scale and just focus on that because that's gonna give you the most bang for your buck. If you wanna learn a little more about what you can do in one form of your pentatonic scale, then watch this video right here.